need your help. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We have the best possible news ever. Live action Spider-Verse is apparently a thing going on behind the scenes at Sony, something that they're planning. So I'll break down what's going on. They were doing Spider-Man Far From Home press. So naturally that's where we learn about all this big stuff that's happening. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. Spider-Man Far From Home is dropping next week. We're doing an IMAX ticket giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Spider-Man comment on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. So big thing first, obviously they're doing the animated Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movies. They're developing the sequel for that right now. They'll probably keep making those movies. They have a bunch of spin-offs planned like Spider-Gwen. They're talking about making other animated spin-offs. And then Sony obviously has all of its Venom and spin-off Venomverse movies going on too in the side. We could use someone like you on my world. I'm sorry, your world? Uh, Mr. Beck is from Earth. Just not ours. There are multiple realities, Peter. This is Earth, Dimension 616. I'm from Earth 833. We share identical physical constants, level four symmetry. I'm sorry, you're saying there's a multiverse? Because I thought that was just theoretical. I mean, that completely changes how we understand the initial singularity. It's insane. So the Sony people were talking about live action Spider-Verse. Kevin Feige was also talking about Venom crossing over with Spider-Man. So it sort of clarified where Marvel is on all this and where Sony is on all this and how it's all going to go down. Uh, any chance there's a multiverse in which Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and your dope. Spider-Man all meet together? Clashing? That'd be dope. But would you want that though? Would you want that? Maybe that's a better question. Yeah. Would, but would you we want that? The thing about this film that's so exciting, right, is we take Spider-Man to Europe, and what's so cool about that is we've never <laughs> seen Spider-Man in Europe before. Now, of course I'd love to make a movie with those guys, it would be so cool. Oh, no, it would be man. amazing, it would be really, really cool, and it's something that the fans really want, so whether Marvel and Sony decide to do that, um, or it's up to them. To do it. It's not up to me, I yeah. can't walk in and be like, Kevin, this is what we're doing on the next one. Yeah. Um, but it would be really awesome. First things first, Kevin Feige clarified that Sony was the one that would be developing the Venom Spider-Man crossover, so he made it sound like there were no plans to bring Venom into the MCU anytime soon. So Venom probably not going to have anything to do with Spider-Man 3, and Marvel seems like it's building its Spider-Man movies to a much different logical endpoint than Sony is going for with its Venom Spider-Man movies. So that means that when Spider-Man eventually down the road crosses over with Venom, it'll probably be Tom Holland crossing over into a Venom movie instead of Venom crossing over into an MCU Spider-Man Tom Holland movie. You will be this honest, legless, faceless thing, won't you? Rolling down. That also means that little further off than Venom Spider-Man, live action Spider-Verse would also be a Sony creation. They would be the people developing that. They own the Spider-Verse franchise in the animated universe right now. It's pretty easy to assume that Kevin Feige would just let them attempt that on their own. There are a lot of really weird technicalities about the sharing arrangement with the Spider-Man character because it seems like Norman Osborn is going to become a big MCU character soon. The Kingpin, really big Spider-Man villain, has also been an MCU character recently and it seems like he'll continue to be so wherever he pops up again in the MCU. But the reason why Venom versus Spider-Man is probably going to happen first is because right now they have Tom Hardy under contract at Sony and they have Tom Holland under contract at Sony. So there's no extra wrangling it would take to get those two together. So after Spider-Man 3 is when I'm expecting them to actually try Venom versus Spider-Man. So that's a good three to five years down the road just for that. Then if that seems to work out, then that's what they would try live action Spider-Verse. So we're talking, you know, good six to seven years before they try something like that. So Sony's endpoint for these Spider-Man movies would be something like Spider-Verse or Spider-Geddon, which is sort of the Infinity War version of a Spider-Man crossover with just Spider-Man characters. The test for that, though, because Sony is already doing these animated Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse movies, is, is crossing all of the different Spider-Man, Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield over in the animated movies first to see if they can get it to work. If you don't remember, when they were doing press for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse last year, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the producers, did say that they wanted to get Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield to guest star as characters in it, but just decided to hold off for potential sequels. We don't really talk about this. They recently started working on that first sequel, so don't be surprised if you hear at least one more familiar voice in it. Like, wait a minute, that sounds like Tobey Maguire voicing that other Spider-Man character. 
But right now that's minimum two to three years off just because it takes a little bit longer to make those animated movies than it does the live action movies. They also talked about incorporating live action elements into the first Spider-Verse animated movie, but decided it was just a little too crazy. The funny thing is, is that if you remember the intro from that movie when they were doing the Chris Pine version of Spider-Man, there were a couple live action elements that they incorporated into the montage. Look, I'm a comic book, I'm a serial, did a Christmas album, I have an excellent theme song. And uh, a so so popsicle. I mean, I've looked worse. But through Amy Pascal, the Sony people were saying that we support the idea of live action Spider Verse. It's just so far off down the road that obviously they're not going to put a date on it. And they're more focused on Venom versus Spider Man in the Venom sequels right now. When it comes to Tom Holland's Spider-Man, that's mostly Kevin Feige MCU stuff. They're mostly the ones handling the developing of that universe. They also clarified that the Venom sequels and the Venom spin-offs, because they're doing the Morbius movie, they're also developing a Kraven the Hunter movie, they're developing a Black Cat movie, those will all be on their own. Like, they're not immediately going to cross over with Venom or with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. It'll all be considered in its own universe, and then maybe down the road if they want to cross them over, then they'll try it when they get there. So that also probably means that we won't see Black Cat popping up in any of the Spider-Man MCU films either. But a lot of you are saying, what's going to happen when they try to get Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield to come back and play their versions of Spider-Man? Because think about it this way, Andrew Garfield will be in his 40s by the time they get something like that, early 40s, and Tobey Maguire will be in his early 50s when they would get to something like that. That's an old version of Spider-Man, but... The really cool thing is, is think about Aunt Bay in the Spider-Man movies, the youngest looking version of Aunt May that we've seen in a movie. They even said that they were treating the character as if she was more like Peter's big sister during Captain America Civil War. Obviously a couple years have gone by, so she's a little bit older by now. Talking a little bit of story, Tobey Maguire would be prime Uncle Ben age. I mean, it'd be a younger version of Uncle Ben. So if you wanted to kill off a version of Spider-Man during a big Spider-Verse live action crossover, he would be a prime candidate. And even then, if they actually do get to it, I think it would probably wind up being a one-off thing just because it'd be so hard to get those actors to come back. And if you wanted to do a follow-up Spider-Geddon live-action movie, you would probably try to look to other versions of Spider-Man to cross over. Tobey Maguire has always spoken highly of Tom Holland's version of Spider-Man since he debuted, and Andrew Garfield hasn't said a whole lot about it. I'm just really excited to just be a fan again as opposed to um, bearing the weight of it. But he did talk about his time as Spider-Man. It's kind of heartbreaking to hear him talk about it because there's this clip where he talks about how he feels like he never quite nailed the character of Spider-Man. But I think the, some, the, there is something that happens in those, I don't know if, what your experience was, but my experience, there's something that happens, uh, there's something that happened with that experience for me where it was uh, story and character were, were actually not top of the the priority list ultimately got it, got it. yeah and maybe I that's i found that really yeah. really tricky i signed up to serve the story and to serve yeah. this incredible yeah. character that i've been dressing as since i was three yeah and then there's the, it gets compromised and and it, it, and, it, and, it, and it breaks breaks your breaks my heart Bro yeah. i got i, I got heartbroken that. a little bit um in, to, to a certain degree not entirely there were a lot of people that were wondering how he felt about Sony after all this went down because they didn't really call him when they were recasting for Tom Holland. He learned that he wasn't Spider-Man anymore when Sony made the public announcement that Tom Holland had been cast as Spider-Man for Captain America Civil War. Like, I guess that means we're not making Amazing Spider-Man 3 anymore and I'm out of a job. As much as he got burned by that, he did that funny Kimmel prank as Spider-Man just a little while after that. So that just lets you know that he's taking it like a champ and is all wonder under the bridge. So I don't think that there would be any issues with him coming back as long as the script was really good. But this is that clip. So if Tom Holland wants to do it, the studio, Sony, wants to do it and the actors are willing to come back and they find a good enough script, we will definitely see live-action Spider-Verse at some point. But like I said, timeline realistically is six to seven years. So everybody, as long as you just stay alive to watch it, you'll get it eventually in some form or another. Because of all the Spider-Man Far From Home stuff happening this week, if they do announce anything about the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse animated sequel, I'll do a separate video about that. Because they're going to get way crazier in the animated movies, way faster than they would in the live-action movies.
There were a bunch of Comic-Con announcements for Marvel and DC recently, so I'll have a couple videos coming up this week. My full review of Spider-Man Far From Home will post next week after the film drops, and I'll do Easter eggs and a post credit scene video, but leave all your video requests in the comments below. Congratulations to the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video, Isaiah Holland. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here for my Thor Guardians of the Galaxy 3 teaser video and click here for my non-spoilery Spider-Man Far From Home review. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.